Welcome to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast, a relaxing and informative show where we explore anxiety, panic, and PTSD, sharing how you can overcome them for life. Aloha, welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I am so happy to be with you again today as together we can consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I'm talking about letting go of anxious victim mentality. In the last episode, I talked a little bit about handling the negative messages that anxiety speaks. And I wanted to dovetail with that a little bit because that can lead us into a victim mentality. We can begin from the anxious thoughts and messages to have anxious victim mentality, to be really thinking that everything outside of us is what's in control of our lives and how we are feeling and actually getting on in our lives. You want to gain new power over your life. If you have been anxious for a long time, you may not have a place where you're, you know, cowering in a corner as a victim, but you may have places where you feel like things around you have power over you, where that may not be necessarily true. Like, is victim mentality keeping you from living your full potential? Have you ever felt that others are always doing things to you that keep you down or keep you in your place? It's easy to fall into the trap of feeling hurt by others, but you don't have to stay there. You can actually overcome this. And it's probably not even true that others are doing this. And if they are, once you get your power back, you will see clearly where situations that you are in need to change. But when you're in the victim mentality, you don't often respond with power and control over your own life. You just go along. The victim mentality can affect everything in your life, including your work, your family, and all of your other relationships. It can have a really negative impact on your ability to succeed. And it can also trap you in a cycle of unhappiness and pain. And what does that feed? That only feeds the anxious fire. Because we are always on the edge of danger. We're dancing around the wormhole, always ready to just slip right into a panic attack or a state of heightened anxiety. There are even more negative consequences. When you think that you're always a victim, you begin to avoid taking responsibility for anything. We tend to narrow it down. We take on less responsibility. Over time, we have narrowed our life down to where we are not taking on responsibility for a lot of things that we used to. And if you don't take on responsibility, then you also feel like there's nothing that you can do to resolve your challenges. So we're trapped. This is where does become a victim mentality. We are trapped in actually feeling like nothing we do can make a difference. Everything is happening to us. So we want to take back the responsibility for our situation because that's where our power is. We want to gain back that power and have more control over our lives. So I do have some strategies that can help you to discard that feeling of being a victim and revel in your newfound freedom. Anxiety is sneaky. It will come in any crack that we leave open for it. So we want to begin by remembering that when those anxious feelings or the victim mentality, or like I talked about on the last episode, the negative anxious messages come in, we want to be aware, oh, oh, there it is. There's an anxious message or a victim 
mentality. We want to notice it and we don't have to give it a lot of power. We can just notice what is going on, label it. Labeling is a great thing because it makes us actually see what it is. There's an anxious thought or there is my victim mentality. There is a victim way of thinking. However you want to phrase it, just noticing it and letting it be there. So we're going to begin by recognizing the mental drain. The victim mentality forces us to feel sorry for ourselves. You got to be honest with yourself with this because we've all been there. We've all had times where we felt sorry for ourselves, but the victim mentality keeps us there. It drains the mind of energy and it forces us to ignore the positive factors in our life. And it is those positive factors. It is that neutral and positive thinking that can help to pull us back out of this because we regain our strength. We are no longer being drained by the victim mentality. This victim mentality prevents us from enjoying life to the fullest. It traps us in an isolated world of pain. The second strategy I have is avoid searching for a rescuer. This is really important, and this may ring a bell with many people. If you are wrapped up in the victim mentality, you may also be searching for someone or something to rescue you. This is extremely important for you to pay attention to because especially with anxiety, we get that thought that we need to be saved. Someone is going to come and save me. Something is going to rescue me. And it could be a person, place, thing, pill, drug, whatever. Nothing is coming to your rescue except you. If we stay in that idea that something else is going to rescue us, someone is coming, it can lead us to more disappointment and hurt feelings. And it may be tempting to turn to our family, our friends, coworkers, neighbors for help. It can even be tempting to look for support in things or a safety blanket, so to speak. But what I want you to focus on is you. You are the strength. You have the power. And it is you that can handle all of these things, not somebody else. It's wonderful to have support. It's wonderful to have people believe in you and take your calls and hold your hand when you need it. But Only you have the power and the strength to pull yourself up and out of whatever it is you are dealing with, with this anxiety. Victims often believe they need another person to get them out of their state of mind. However, I want you to remember that even when you are anxious, you have the strength and the power to change your own thoughts. It's important to recognize your inner courage and use it to change your mentality. You don't need another person to take over your life. You don't need another person to pull you up out of your anxious state or your panic attack. Like I said, it's wonderful to have support. It's wonderful to know that people love me and are there for me. But you know what? For some of us, it's sometimes in our lives, we don't have that. And I'm talking to all you out there who don't have that kind of support right now. If you got to plug in a podcast, plug in a podcast, but I'm not pulling you up out of that. You are. You're pulling yourself up out by listening and calming your nervous system and making the changes that we are talking about here. It is you. You are the powerful one. You hold the key. The next item I want to talk about is I want you to take responsibility. Instead of blaming your luck, your family, your friends, your mates for your predicament in life, take control and acknowledge your responsibility. It isn't the circumstances that happened. It was your response to those circumstances that you 
control. Things happen to people, and maybe some people look like they're on easy street. We don't know what's really happening, believe me. I have worked with a lot of people that you would pass them on the street and think they have everything and they got it on easy street, and it is not true. We don't always know. We should only be focusing on our own needs and what we can do to take best care of ourselves. So take control and acknowledge your own responsibility. Here in Hawaii, we call that your kuleana. By taking responsibility for your current state of mind, you move closer to eliminating that victim mentality. And that victim mentality drains your energy. So when that goes, it's like getting a breath of fresh air. You'll recognize your power to make positive changes and stop being a victim. The more responsibility you take. This is a great place for your journal because you can say, what is my responsibility? Where can I take on more responsibility? Where have I let go of my responsibilities and drop the ball. These are great places for us to be, you know, self-reflective and make some changes because that is where your power is. The fourth thing that I want you to consider doing is meditate because meditation is a powerful tool that can help you to see the world in a new way, your world, your inner world. Meditation is you getting to know you because you're spending time with your mind. It's not about reaching some states of consciousness changes. That can happen. That is a whole nother ball of wax. What I want you to do is use meditation in the way that it is meant as a way of getting to know your own mind. You with you. This can really help you to find peace and calmness in those little corners deep inside you that are always there. We just forgot how to access them. It can also help you to turn inward and see if you have a victim frame of mind somewhere in there. By practicing meditation, you may discover that your issues are insignificant. You may notice how your mind and your body react to negativity or stress. This will allow you to focus your energy on creating positive coping mechanisms that don't involve victimhood. One of the benefits of meditation is the ability to see your own thought process and change it. We can't change things that we are not aware of. You have to spend enough time quietly to see what your mind is doing in order to learn where you can make changes in the process. Meditation can also help you become an observer, a really good observer, as you see your own state of mind. It can help you to find closure and stop the victim cycle. We can't change what we don't see what we are not aware of. So meditation can really help you with that. Like I said, I look at meditation as you being with you, seeing where the mind goes, observing it, having curiosity about what the monkey mind is doing. We can't quiet something down that we are not familiar with. That's actually what meditation is. It's becoming familiar with your own mind. So there's another tip here for you. I want you to try other stress relieving techniques, all of the ways that you can find that help you to reduce your stress. Meditation is a great option for coping with stress. Once you learn to not be afraid of it or think that it is something big and lofty that you have to be afraid of or learn how to do or do for long periods of time. But beyond meditation, which we have lots of other episodes about, you may want to just try more activity such as movement like yoga or swimming or walking or running 
or other types of rhythmic exercise. The rhythm can help you to let go of your mind. I know other exercises such as sports and lifting weights, those type of things, they require a different kind of concentration. Things like swimming, running, walking, we're in a rhythm. And even yoga, because you are staying with the breath, that rhythmic activity can really help you to relieve some of the stress that's going on in your mind. You can also manage your stress by doing other things such as hobbies and artistic activities, making music or reading or drawing, whatever it is that can help you to just relax that mind. Let it go. The ability to manage your stress will help you to create a new mindset that is much stronger and healthier, and it'll help to make you a more powerful individual. And when you feel more powerful, you will have no need for that victim mentality. As you experiment with different stress relieving techniques, you'll discover new ways to let go of the negativity, to not let it take hold of you so easily. You'll learn how to stop blaming others, blaming luck, thinking that life is doing this to you. You'll also gain the ability to manage stress in all kinds of different situations. You don't have to let the victim mentality control your life. You can take these steps to get past it and change the cycle. Just like with anxiety and panic attacks, we want to interrupt the cycle. It's all we want to do. Let's just interrupt it. Let it go for a little bit. Get a breather and see where we go. So start using these ideas that I had today and regain your power. I love being here with you and I hope that this episode was helpful. If you have anything that you want to hear about or learn more about, you can send an email to anxietycoachespodcast at gmail.com. And now for today's quote. You have power over your own mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. And that's from Marcus Aurelius. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. Find more information at theanxietycoachespodcast.com.